Hello and welcome back to the David Akers Guitars YouTube channel. Today we're going to go through the first half of a fret job, as we refer to it normally. The instrument's going to be getting new frets. This part's going to be disassembling the guitar and also leveling the fingerboard, and that's pretty much where we're going to stop with this video. There are two reasons you would want to replace the frets. The first would be if the instrument has been played to death, or like in this case, the wood in the neck and fingerboard has expanded and contracted, causing hills and valleys over the play and surface, which causes buzzes in places you don't want them. Also, when you're putting a nut in, you only need a drop or two of super glue. If you put too much, the next guy behind you is going to have to bust the nut out like this in order to extract it. This was a super important factor with the guitar. It does not have a slab fingerboard as is typical. It has the maple is radiused and it has a thin veneer of a laminated rosewood over it. That laminated fingerboard will come into play again in a minute. But for now I want to go over extraction here of the frets. I'm heating them to loosen any glue that might be helping hold them in. And also scoring around the edges and then using the pullers to pull them up there. I chose a soldering iron to heat them because I didn't want something very large heating a large area and maybe unlaminating the fingerboard. I'm going to use my tail vise and a bench dog system to hold this in place while I do the leveling. This is just a little uh, call that I'm making specifically for the guitar out of some scrap pine there to fit. Okay, so I'm reading my straight edge right now. And right now I've got relief here, a hump here. The hump is right in here. It's falling off there on the treble side, on the bass side. I've got, oh, I've got uh, back bow everywhere, basically. The largest hump's right in here. And that was with just a slot adjustment to the rods. I'm going to have to re-tighten it until I'm at least level here. So the problem is that tension has been released all over this neck specifically in the wood of the neck, likely caused by the wood not being aged properly at the time the, the instrument was produced. And at the current age of the instrument, it should not move again. So what we're doing is taking the truss rod and we are pushing it, pushing the wood into a state where we can level the areas that the release of tension has caused to either rise or fall, making the hills and valleys we spoke about earlier. And this really is necessary because when the wood gets like this, regardless of where you put the truss rod, it will never really get back to a true level state again until the areas where tension released is leveled. It's important if you're going to use a bench dog system like this to clamp a neck in that you don't over tighten that end vise because it can cause the neck to bow up in the middle, uh, which will affect how the fingerboard comes level. So the neck is actually just sitting. It's just tight enough to hold it in place. I can pick it up very easily with my hand and it's not not really at all putting any pressure on it. It's just enough to hold it to keep it from rocking backwards and forwards as I level in that direction of the fingerboard. And you can see there it's very loose. Also I have a slight issue with this leveling this I don't have a straight edge this long that's okay because I own a joiner and I've got a lot of scrap 2 by 4 so I'm gonna make a straight edge right quick one last thing I'm gonna do here to prep for surgery I got this thing in there literally loose enough to pick up but it's plenty tight this way the direction I'll be putting force one thing I do want to do though get this. I just got this piece clamped on this side of the neck and I'm going to clamp another piece on the other side. And that is still loose enough to just pick up but it's going to eliminate side to side motion and we're good. It's time for surgery. Now I'm marking with a pencil everywhere on the fingerboard so that I can tell where my leveling beam is going to contact. And here I've got the beam with some 36 grit with a 36 grit sanding belt cut and attached to the bottom of it. And what I'm trying to do is stay parallel with the center line. 
I'm also trying not to change the radius and in a minute you'll see me using a radius gauge to check and make sure and see if I need to do any adjustments as I'm saying. And here's a look after just a little bit of sanding and you can see there even without seeing the marks you can kind of see where the fresh rosewood is versus where the uh, untouched rosewood is. And you can see that area that we determined was humped earlier. That's the first area that's getting material removed, and that's exactly what we want. And here's checking the radius. This one's a seven and a quarter, so just maintaining that seven and a quarter along the whole length if I can. It's important to check with the straight edge too as you go because you can level this in correctly. And when you're doing a fret job, this is the fret job right here. Regardless how good you make the metal pieces look on top, if you mess this part up, the whole job's not going to be right. So, checking with the straight edge is important as well. And this was our high spot right here. So I'm holding pressure right in here. Not a ton, because you can push it level. In this case, i got a tiny gap up here, but I can push it and it'll eliminate right there. And I'm pretty level there. That's going to be less than ideal because when the strings are pulling from the headstock, you're still going to have a hump here. So I've got a little bit of work left to do. We are very close. Though. There's very little showing up here. All the pressure right here where our uh, oh, back bowed. We've got just a little bit of work left to do. And what I have to do as I'm leveling and make sure you can see this in the shot here yeah you'll be able to see that what I'm doing is I'm leveling because I'm at the point where the straight edge will kind of ride the neck so what I'm doing is holding pressure underneath here with my hand you can see the neck is very loose in this because like I said I didn't want to alter that back bow that I had established before so I'm putting pressure behind right here and I'm leveling mainly right here on top because this is what we need to get down to eliminate and any uh, unlevelness and reset it back so that the middle is the same as it ends. Because if you don't, your fretboard, your level will ride it like this, and that's no good. This is important right here. See all this stuff that's right in here? I haven't touched this yet. This is completely untouched, and this is completely untouched. But that's not really going to affect playability on a base like this. Uh, I don't see these regions being used a whole lot. Uh, so I'm not going to remove unnecessary material from the bulk of the fretboard here in order to eliminate that in this corner. I'll just polish it up with the grits of sandpaper as I get there. This is not going to affect playability here. And this is what it should look like on a fingerboard that's polished up to about 600 grit. The farther you go with the sandpaper after that, uh, 600 is about as far as you need to go really. It makes a nice looking fingerboard on an instrument with strings on it, everything's frets on it, strings on it, everything. The 600 grit makes a really nice looking fingerboard. You do want to go ahead and polish it up to that though because the next thing you're going to do at this stage is start putting new frets in. And when those get in the way it's going to be very difficult to get a good polish. So now's the time to polish. I appreciate your time and thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you're interested in more content like this.